In this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up your own self-hosted version of Coolify. We're going to be setting it up on an EC2 instance on AWS. Before I get into that, I just want to quickly show you Coolify and why it's both impressive and why you might find it interesting. Here it's described as an open source and self-hostable Heroku, Nullify, or Vercel alternative. And what it allows you to do is it's program language agnostic. You can deploy this on anything from a Raspberry Pi to an EC2 instance to a DigitalOcean droplet. It allows you to deploy on a single server, on multiple servers, or even with Docker Swarm with Kubernetes support on the way. It will set up your SSL certificates for you. There's also push to deploy. Say if your application is set up to deploy whenever everything's merged to the main branch, you can do that with this. There's no vendor lock-in, but you have complete control on all of your data. There's automatic database backups, which you can plug in directly into S3. There's a ton of other nice features within here. I'm going to be showing you how you can deploy the LLM answer engine project that I have to AWS. If you don't have an AWS account, it's pretty easy to get set up. You'll likely be able to get hundreds of dollars in credits to try out different features within AWS. Once you're signed up and signed in to AWS, you'll have their console here, and this is what it looks like. So we're going to be going to EC2, and then once you're within the EC2 dashboard here, what you can do is you can just click the button to launch instance. Once you're on the page, we're just going to name this. You can name it whatever you want. In this case, I'm going to call it Coolify. We're going to select that we're going to be using the latest version of Ubuntu. And then we're going to scroll down here. And then the requirements for Coolify, we need two CPUs and two gigs of RAM. And for the closest tier to that, it's the T2 medium here. We have two CPUs as well as four gigs of memory, a little bit more on the memory side. Now for the key pairs, this is going to be what you use to SSH into your server. If it's the first time that you've used AWS, you can just go ahead and create a new key pair here. And we'll just call this Coolify keys. And then we're going to be using a PEM extension for this. So you can create that. It will download this file here and we'll just keep that in mind for the next step. We're going to allow traffic from HTTPS as well as HTTP. Going to keep scrolling here. Now, if we go back to the requirements here, we need at least 30 gigs of storage. So if we just bump this number up to 30, we can go ahead and launch our instance. So now it might just take a moment for it to launch here. You will see it in the pending state here just for a moment or two. Now, if we scroll down to our security groups here and we click on a launch wizard one, we're just going to edit the inbound rules here and we're going to add one rule here. We're going to go custom TCP and then we're going to expose port 8000 on, on anywhere IPv4. And then once you have that, just scroll down to the bottom, save the rules out. And then we're going to hop back to our instances here. So now that we see that it's running, there's a couple different options here. So you can click into the instance and you can see some of the details here, like the IP and all of that. What we're going to do here is we're going to connect to the instance here. If you just click connect and you go over to SSH client, we're going to copy this command here. And then what you need to do is, so this goes back to that PEM key that we had just downloaded here. I have that key within a folder here. If I just ls this out, we see that we have our Coolify keys. And now if I just copy this command here, what you can do, you can either copy that in directly depending on how the permissions are set up, or you can also sudo ssh, you can put in your password, and then we'll get a security prompt just like this the first time that we connect to it. We'll just say yes. We see that it's permanently added. And now we see that we're within the server here. If I just LS out here, you can see that we're in that Ubuntu instance with the IP of our EC instance. Now, the one thing on AWS, if you just copied this command, I'll show you what it does here. Then it says, please run as root. So if you see that, don't be too concerned because with this curl command, we're requesting to the Coolify CDN to install it. So again, I'm just going to copy this. And this time, instead of just running bash, what we're going to do here is we're going to sudo bash. So here we're just going to be piping that through to give those root permissions. Once you see it start to install here, it has to install Docker. It has to set up a handful of different commands that it has to get everything running. It just takes a couple moments to set everything up here. You'll see everything start to install download the necessary dependencies and all of that. And then once that's done, we can move on to the next step. All right, so now we see, congratulations, your Coolify instance is ready to use. Please visit this link here to get started. 
This ties back to the port that we had just exposed within our security group here. So now if we go over to our browser and I paste in that IP with that port, if everything's working, you'll get a screen like this. Now, the one thing is if you don't get to a screen like this, just go back. If you skip the step on exposing the port 8000 here for the inbound rules, just make sure that you circle back and actually set that up because otherwise you won't be able to actually get to this page. To set this up, you can just plug in a name and an email here, and then you can set up a password to log in to your instance here. We'll click register. We'll click save. We're just going to skip the onboarding in this example, but feel free to go through it if you'd like. I'm going to disable this pop-up. So this is what you see when you log in. So you have this nice dashboard. We have projects, we have servers, we have sources. I'm going to run you through a really quick example here. If I just go over to my profile here and I just grab a repo that I have public. So I'm going to grab the LLM answer engine project here. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click add a project here. In this one, I'm just going to call it answer. We're going to click continue. Then from here, we're going to click in to the project environment. We're going to add a resource. So you can select from a ton of different resources here. This is just to give you a little bit of an idea on the different things that you can plug in here. There's a huge list of different services within here. There's a number of different databases that you can set up. You can also set it up with a Docker image. In this example, I'm going to be showing you how to set it up with a public repository, but you can also set this up with a private repository as well. If I just click public repository here and I click local host and I do standalone Docker, then you just have to put the link to the repository here. You can click check repository. And then here, depending on your projects, there's Nix packs, there's static, there's Docker file or Docker compose. In this case, I have a Docker file within my project. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. I'm going to be using Docker file for the build pack variable, the next step there, and then you can deploy this. So before I deploy this, I'm just going to go over to environment variables. I'm going to click developer view, and then I'm going to paste in all of my environment variables from my .env here. And then once that's plugged in, you can just switch back to the normal view there and you'll see all of your different keys all plugged in. Now I'm going to click deploy here. And then we have this log, this deployment log, like you'd see in some of these popular services, whether it's Nellify or Vercel, it will start to go through the different steps on reaching for the GitHub repository. It will go through the steps of pulling everything down. It will go through the build process. In this case, since it's using Docker, it will spin up that Docker image and then it will subsequently grab all the resources and build it out from there. So it goes without saying that this is already pretty impressive, right? All right, so now we see that the update was complete here. Now, if we go back to the configuration of the project, you'll see that you have these domains here. Once you have the link here, you can make a new tab and then we can just paste it in just like that. And then you'll see, there we go. Now we have a self-hosted version of the answer engine. We can just click through to it and we see that it's working just as you'd expect. I wanted to give a huge shout out to the creator of Coolify. It's incredibly impressive what it allows you to do. Now, the other thing that I didn't really note is it doesn't just need to be for one project. So if you have a ton of projects, you can just throw them all in here. You can provision your server on whatever you like. This could be a Raspberry Pi, an old laptop. It could be an EC2 instance. In this case, it could be a DigitalOcean droplet. Whatever it might be, it gives you a lot of autonomy over your project. This is a really impressive option on if you do want to self-host your application. That's it for this video. If you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until the next one.